Hey Jackal! In this video, I'll show you how to make this audio visualizer in DaVinci Resolve by using MIDI files, which means that you don't have to use any add-ons. Now let's get digital. Now to make this effect, you do need a MIDI file, and let me just give you an example. Now the song that I'll be using is the Fat Red Mayday, and I'll be playing the first 10 seconds. And now for the comparison, I have converted this mp3 file to a MIDI file by using one of the online converters and let's take a listen to this. So it's totally not the same, but we do need the MIDI file to actually make the effect. So now let's make this composition if you use a background image, by default this will be 5 seconds long. And we need the fusion composition, so right click, make a new fusion composition. You can change the duration if you want, but if you don't know how long the music is, simply put the fusion clip on. And by default it is also 5 seconds long. Then you want to import the audio file. This can be either a WAV or an MP3, put it onto a timeline. You can put the MIDI file onto the timeline, as you can see. I can't put the MIDI file on, then simply select both medias to extend them. Now if this is a video clip that you have beneath, you may not be able to extend it all the way, depending on how long the clip actually is. Now I'll simply select the fusion clip and go into the fusion page. In the fusion page, I'll first add the background node and the merge. This will be the last two nodes. The background will be connected to the yellow input of the merge. And in the background node, I'll simply lower the alpha to zero so that this is transparent. And now let's actually make the effect. The first thing that I'll add is a line at the bottom. To do that, I'll use a background node so we can change the color and the line is made with rectangle. Connect it like so and the background will be connected to the green input, which means that it will be in the front with rectangle selected. Change the width to one and the height to 0 0.05 and position it down. In the background node, we'll change the color. This can be a solid color if you want. What I've done is I've used a gradient. I'll add a couple of points, simply click on the gradient itself and then change the color of each individual point. Simply select the point to change a color of it. And you can also position the points if you need to. And now this is static and I've also animated this bit. And to animate it, we'll use the offset. By default, this is selected once. So if you go left, right, you'll only see the ending colors. So you can either choose repeat. This will repeat every time when the value comes to one or minus one, as you can see. And what we can also do, if you don't want this sharp edge, go to one of the values at the end, either this one or that one, copy the value and paste it to the other one. So now we'll get a smooth transition. And I'll change this one to blue. So now with repeat, when this comes to one, this gradient will repeat itself. If you use ping pong, same thing, except this value has to be 2. And I'll use this value. First I'll start at 0 on frame 0 and keyframe this. And because I want this animation to be slow, I'll go to frame 200 and keyframe the value at 2. Now this animates just one time. And to make this repeat itself all the way to the end, it doesn't matter how long the video clip will be, Go to the spline, you can enable show only select a tool, so only the tool that is selected is shown. Then click on offset, click on zoom to fit, select both points. And now you have a couple of options how you want to animate this. This can be relative, it will go all the way to the end in infinity, as you can see the value just keeps increasing. 
this can be set to ping pong. So the value goes from 0 to 2, from 2 to 0, and so on. And then you can use the set loop, which is what I'll use. The value will go from 0 to 2, and then it will jump back to 0 and go to 2 again. And now with this animation done, we only have to do the fun bit, which is adding the visuals. I've done that using the particles. So we need the particle emitter and we need the particle render so we can actually see them. Connect them like so and connect them like so. So now we have a bunch of particles that are small. I'll go to the particle emitter, go to the region, change this to rectangle. I'll set the width to 1 and the height will be something like this one and I'll position it down to overlap it on top of the gradient. Now I'll change the style because I don't want the points, they are too small. In the style I'll change this to Ngon. I'll choose a solid circle. We do need the size so I'll increase the size. This is a bit too small. So I've set the size to 4. I'll change the size of real life to be big in the beginning and small at the end. Maybe we can add some fade controls at the end. We'll see how that will look like. And then we go to the actual controls. We'll decrease the number to 1 just for now. I'll change the lifespan to 18 frames. And my project is at 30 frames, so a bit more than half a second. So maybe I'll just use 20 frames. And I'll then also change the velocity. I've used 0.2. And because I want to make the particles move up, I'll use angle as 90. So now the particles move up and they also fade out. I'll be changing these values later on so they actually use the music. But now let's make it so these dots interact with this line. To do that, we'll use a displace node. Shift space to open the select tools, type in displace, I'll position this a bit up. So in the background of the displace we'll connect this line and in the foreground we'll connect this particle emitter. And we can now connect it to here and we do get a cutout as you can see. It's not ideal just yet but we'll make some changes. First change the type from radial to xy. In this case, we need the Y channel offset. So in refraction, I'll change this to minus 0.2. We'll have to play with the offset. Maybe I'll just leave it as is for now. And then we have the spread. We'll just have to tweak the values. You can even increase the value beyond the default. So maybe I'll use the value of 4. You can change the channel if it makes any difference in your case. In mine it doesn't so I'll simply leave it to green. So now we have this interaction done. Now we have to spice things up a little bit. That will be done in the particle emitter because we'll be changing how many particles we actually spawn. To do that and to use the MIDI music I'll make a new node. Shift space to open the select tools. This time I'll use a custom tool. We'll connect this number in one, right click, modify with and use MIDI extractor. The modifier tab now shows up, select it and this is where the MIDI file comes into play. So I'll simply load this one in. Now you have a couple of controls on what you can do. Most of the time you'll probably want to use the combine events and change the most recent to sum. Now how this will change will be reflected in the number in one and for now let me just pin this and maybe what we can do is connect this value to something else maybe to a text for now anyway. So right click expression in the text field and I'll connect this to the number in one and why I want to do that is because I don't want this value to be more than one. And you can do that by going to the modifiers and changing the result scale. Now is this the final value? Probably not. You'll have to go over the whole piece of the music that you have and adjust the value. 
Now why I'm doing this is also because this value will be used to spawn the particles. So in the particle emitter, I'll now type in here equals for the number and connect this to the custom tool number in one. So now we shouldn't have as many particles being spawned on each frame. And if they are, we can simply divide this by two. Then I'll also change the lifespan variance. So this is 20 by default. So every particle ends after 20 frames. We can change that, type in equals. I'll simply paste the custom tool one number in one. And now because this is a small value, as you can see, I'll maybe multiply it. I can multiply it by a hundred. So this will be another 20 frames. This is actually not true. As you can see, this value is divided by two. So let me just multiply this by 50. So we have something cool going on. What I can also do that will make it look a little bit better is the velocity variance. So I'll also type equals here, paste this value in, but I'll also divide it by two. Or maybe let's go with four so that the velocity doesn't go too quick. Now can we do anything so that these particles move a bit up? Let's go to the displace node. So the offset doesn't fix that. Maybe this Y refraction will, so I'll increase the value. So maybe I'll go with 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5. So now the particles move almost all the way up. So that's nice. And we can also get some of these funky combinations. Now, if you want some light, you can also increase the power and adjust the light angle. It's visible faintly. I don't want that. What I do want though is sun glow and I'll add it right here. Let me delete this node. We can use a glow node. Hold shift to connect it automatically. I will now unpin the custom tools. I don't want the glow to be too strong because I'll also add some soft glow after this node. Select tools, shift space, type in soft, soft glow, maybe something like that. I can now also delete the text and this is basically it. Now all that you have to do is go into the edit page, wait for this to render out. Now when it comes to the image, I should increase it. What I could also do to make it a bit interesting is animate it at the beginning from this value to maybe this one. And now to make this look a little bit better, I'll go to the fusion composition and change the composite mode to add. You can use any other modes. And with the image, what I'll also do is change the opacity to maybe 50%. And this is also the end result that you can get. Now in the media extractor, you have to use the node mode. If you change it, you don't really get any results. But what you can change is all of these options to get different results. And if this is too big, you can always change the initial size, but that also means that the blobs don't come all the way up. So that's something that you have to consider. Can you hear, can you hear, can you hear my voice? Coming through, coming through, coming through the noise. I'm floating through outer space. And that's one way on how to make the audio visualizer in DaVinci Resolve by using MIDI files. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.